Okay, welcome to Cloud Training for Tuesdays. Today we are talking about IAM. And this class is kind of very, very interesting class because <laughs> it's a peculiar class full of great minds. And today we are going to be focusing on IAM, uh, IAAS. Public cloud provider pro always give three services. The major they give majorly three services. And uh, despite they may try to expand these three services in different ways, however, these are the basic three services that public cloud provider gives. Now, what is a public cloud? Public cloud is just uh, a company that have resources, IT resources stored in a big IT room known as data center. And they provide these resources to people to consume based on demand and you pay as you go. Well, you can also go there and make a bulk payment. You can reserve some resources and you can pay by spot. There are so many payment platform, payment processes. But today we're going to be focusing on the services that we are providing, which is infrastructure as a service, IAAS. So what is an infrastructure as a service? Infrastructure as a service is just a basic, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a simple way, these are all the resources that they provide, they give it to you to use without interfering on how you use it or how you set it up. So their SLA in infrastructure as a service is the physical infrastructure, which is the physical data center, <laughs> Is, is their responsibility. But everything they have to do with their resources usage or how you did the usage, the configuration, the setup is your responsibility. You understand me? So you'll see like a custom services where they say, okay, go, you are an expert, go there and you use what you like. And you understand me? If you use configure it wrongly, it's your responsibility. If uh, the resources is consuming more, it's your responsibility. If the application is not delivering well due to your configuration issue, it's your responsibility. They may provide you support when you, when you reach out to them. They may provide you support, depends on your package. And you sometimes it's mostly it's free, but sometimes you have to subscribe to a higher level. If you want a higher level support, you have to pay, be paid per premium. Now they can just book a meeting with you. If you have an issue, they come up, send up their team to you. They support you, tell you what, how to do in the best way. And that would, that would be it. You understand? But why would uh, a company employ you? Is because they expect you to understand how to set up a basic system, how to set up a standard system and a production-based system. And... If there's no how you talk about infrastructure as a service without talking about storage, compute power, uh, operating system, network, especially network, because network is the basic, is the basic skill an engineer should have. Whether a DevOps engineer or a cloud engineer, you are, must have the basic network skill. Yes, tell me. I'm talking about network. Network in cloud is is not is is not a real physical network. Is a uh, is alike. It look the the setup is like it's like a physical network. So that's why it's because the word like it look like, and a masquerade like or should I say, um. Uh, um, a system, a network that, uh, uh, let me use the word, um, almost like, you understand me? It exists, but it's not existing physically. That's why they use the word virtual. Virtual means it's not like it physically exists, but it looks like what exists naturally physically. So the way they say something is virtual means it exists, but it's not something you can physically assess. So they designed their network in a way in looking like the physical network. 
but it's not actually a physical network. It's actually a virtual network. So what does that also imply? It implies because the, within the AWS or public cloud SLA, they are in charge of the physical network. You are not supposed to go there and interfere into their physical network. And I want to lie to you, the physical network of a, of a data center is complex, very complex. I require experts to work on it. But they try their best to design a replica, a virtual aspect of that same network so that with a virtual aspect, you can also have that feeling of doing networking. So when you see virtual V, V is always more of, when they say their network is basically VPC for AWS, it's called VPC, which means virtual private cloud. And under VPC, they have what we call SBN, which, which, which is a, a portion of a VPC, which is called uh, subnet. That is a sub of the network. You understand me? That means of the word subnet. Subnet or sub, sub means a, a portion. Subnet. Then on that sub, the word net means network, right? On that subnet, there is another word called um, route. And I'm just trying to give you the registry because I'm going to be explaining all this thing. I'm going to be seeing it called route. Then under the route, there's what we call ACL, access control list. Then, then you now have a gateway. If you know, the word gateway, you should understand the middle of gateway. Gateway means access, the way it's been accessed, gateway, and other parameters. So now let's go into networking. So in a virtual private network, according to, it's like, what well, this is the scenario. This is, this is the analogy. I'm going to use this analogy. They are saying, okay, you are coming to our house. You are coming to our AWS account which we know that is a very broad, broad account because it's a collection of so many data centers. So you are accessing it through their website. For you to have, for you to access it through their network, through their, do you want to assess, you assess all their network? Assume this is their network. They expect you to have a way to connect to this network. For example, this is their network. You should create a path that will be unique to you, that with that part, you'll be able to assess what you have put inside their, 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 their infrastructure. For example, now this is the resources you have put in their infrastructure. This is the resources you want you, because whenever they give you their resources, their infrastructure, they expect you to be in charge of everything. So this is your resources. Let's assume this is your resources. Now, if this is your resources, you should be able to privately come into your resources without affecting other people also using the, the, the cloud. So they expect you to create a path. Let me use the word path. <laughs> It was to create a path that we connect you to your resources. And this path must be unique, must be private to you. So the process of creating this path and the process of this path also having access to other places. Because after you create your resources, your goal is that these resources is also being used by people. You understand me? So people should be able to connect in and out and use this, this, this thing that you put in there. Maybe you are, connect, you are creating these resources with their, you are creating these resources with their infrastructure, as I, as I explained here. These are their, all their resources. These are all their resources. So this is all their resources. And 
for you to be able to use their resources, you, you are planning to use their resources and put your resources inside their own platform. So if you are, so if, for you to be successful in creating resources and using resources, you must be able to create a seamless path that is unique to you. So this process of creating this path is called networking. So actually that is what networking really means. Networking means paths to somewhere. Paths, networking. So when you hear the word network, it actually means connection from one place to the other, from one point to the other. That is the meaning of the word network. Why am I breaking it down? Because I know some of us here are not IT people, right? So, but you should know what network is all about. So, this part that you use in putting your resources and also the resources having access to other persons to use is called network. Do you understand? Do you understand? Hello? 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 I can hear you. Do you understand? Yeah, I do understand. Uh, yes, 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 you can understand. Okay. Okay. Now, we are understand the word network. Now, this in a physical network, there, there, are, some, there are some parameters, there are some uh, basic uh, <clears throat> properties a network should have. One, a network should have the region it covers, the area, because fine, is their resources, but you cannot be everywhere. <laughs> you understand me? You have to create a part that, a part that you can, that all, you can put all your resources within. For example, now, this is AWS, and this is where you want to put your resources, right? This is your network, right? So you must provide, let me put another thing here. So this is your resources. This is where you want to put, you see, from this area to this area is where all your resources are going to be. So in that case, let's just put it this way. Let's just put it this way. Well, let me use the right arrow. I think the arrow, oh yeah, well, I can use this. Okay, good. Do I have any arrow that I have two parts? Yes, cool. So this part, see from year to year is where you want all your resources to be. You can see from here to here is all the places you want all your resources to be. In AWS, this place from this place, all these parts that your, your network is going to cover, they made it in a way that your only one network that you create will only be available in one region. In one, um, one, one region, yes, must be in one region. So if you want to have all your network in all the regions, you have to create network in all region, but you can link network in region A to network in region B. You understand now? So, but every region that you want to use your resources on, you have to create a resources in that, a network resources in that region. You can call it highway. So now, but despite you have your resources in that region, you cannot put all resources in everywhere in the region. You understand that? So that particular place that you create, that first network you create in that region is called your virtual private cloud network, also known as VPC. So a VPC is actually a network that you create for a region. But you know, in a region, there is also a sub-region, also known as AZ, availability zone, like I explained before. Let me go to AWS and sh just show you. 
show you this. Please, I want you to take note of this. This is what makes you a real DevOps infrastructure engineer. Because if you, if you miss this, so sorry, it will be difficult for you to really understand. I think I have to log in. Hold on, let me log in first. Let me stop sharing. I want you to take, I want to, I want to trust to really have, ju do justice to this. Hold up, please. Because after today's class, by the time we talk about other things that people are talking about, you will no longer have issues. But this is where your work actually lies. Hold on. Am I still sharing my screen? No, oh, let me be sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me pause recording. Okay, thank you so much. You can see, even in region North Virginia, you can see this is a sample network that has already been created for you. Every network, every uh, cloud provider will create a sample for you. But you can see they created each. That's why they have one subnet, one VPC. They created a subnet in region. You can see even in North Virginia, North Virginia, they have C's. It's almost six, Nabi. They have yeah, six. Six A Z. One E, one B, one D, one A, one F, one C. So your network you created in this region will cover all these zones. Meaning, if you have network in this region, you can put your decide to put your application in either UA East One E or UA E One C. This is why they said cloud provider cloud provide high availability. Because imagine if you have one one server here, you have one server here, you have one server here. In case there is a problem in this one US East One E, you can design your application that this one A will take over the job. It's called uh, using load balancer. You can use load balancer. You can put your application in all these zones and use a load balancer to spread the load so that when one server goes down, another server that is on another region can take over the job. Because you are seeing US1E now in this place, like as if they are closed. They are not actually closed. They are far apart. All these rich zones are far apart. And their power distribution are far apart. Their network model are independent, just that they bridge it using uh, and they use another gate to bridge it, to bridge this A and B together so that all of them can share the same resources. But they have independent uh, network. So if you have a VPC in this region, meaning you can put your resources in either of this sub-region. So this sub-region, the network in this sub-region is called subnet. So you can see a VPC, all your network resources, then your, net, your, your network in each of the zone. It's kind of, that's why they say AZ, availability zone, or known available zone. These are available zone or availability zone. Available zones are this in this region, you have six. If you go to another region, you see that it may not be up to this. Go to another region, go to Ohio. In South Africa, I think South Africa just have about four. Did you click it? No, I just clicked on Ohio. Okay, you see. Uh, it's going to open all the network there too. And it's not advisable to use the default network. You can see in this place, you just have how many? Okay, just take three. Three. Just three. Just three. A, B, and C. So different regions have, some different regions have so many uh, network. Go to Africa, South Africa. Have you enabled South Africa? 
You've not enabled South Africa. No, I've not enabled South Africa. You can go out there. It's a place you can go down and enable as long as you want to. You understand? You can go to manage region. If you click manage region, you enable. But let's not bother ourselves with that. But you understand what we are talking about. Now, let yes. me go back. For close stop. You don't need permission because you're using an IAM role. Yeah. IAM does not have permission unless you grant that permission. You grant that person that access to that permission. Okay, now let's go. To my, go back to my class because after now we are going to practice. Um, I have already been apologized earlier that this will take a little longer class because we need to know this. Please stop sharing. Let me continue. Okay, now we have we have established the basic networking stuff, right? Now let's talk about. Excuse me, I'm still on here. So I've opened this. Open it now. What is going on? Are you, are you, are you? Okay. So I always take my time to do this when it comes to IAAS, because this is what, this is the basic things that, okay, now this is it. This place to this place is the region, right? In that region, we call it VPC. On that region, they may different zone. So this, your, how do you create this network? You see this, this, this arrow you see that we are calling network it has an identity. There's a law that binds the security of your identity. That law is called protocol. The protocol is the law that, that binds this transmission of your, of your network, the rules that your network will follow. I think this is a part of protocol, yes? Or oh, I think it, this is a, oh, see, protocol, protocol, protocol. And somebody spell protocol again. It's like, see, it's just coming. It is o, oh. o, not A. Yes, yes, protocol, yes. Sorry. Yeah, this, this is protocol. It's just something is cloudy my mind on that part. <laughs> so this protocol is the law that binds the, so that your own network will maintain your own and go to this place. So these protocols, is the rule you must follow. You understand me? So that your line will be straight and your network will go to your place where you are going to. So that protocol, because we are using internet eh, in all our processes, internet means movement from one place to the other. That's why we call it internet protocol, IP. Because internet means internetworking, inter movement from one place to the other. That is meaning of internet. So protocol is the law that binds it. It's called IP. When you hear the word IP, the IP actually means the movement from, your, from one place to the other and the laws that binds it. It's called IP. IP means internet protocol. It means the law that binds your own network so that your network can reach your place. Now, if we have IP, which I've already explained, we have a uh, you know, meaning of protocol now. Now, there, before, there is a law that there's a body that manages how that law is being organized. You understand me? So then they now have to, that body came up with a class. We came up with a rule, different rule. So you may have heard of the word CIDA, S I R O D. S-I-R-O-D-R-O. CIDA, if you look at the full meaning of CIDA in internet, is just the way they classify internet provider. So the word CIDA actually means, uh, let me see, it actually means classless inter-domain route or, or sub subnetting. But you can say this is where CIDA means classless interdomain 
routing. So this is the law. This is, is actually by the body. It is an internet body that, that designed this law. You understand me? So this IP has not, it's not like IP just started now. IP has been, have been upgrading just the way we also scale in IT. You understand me? They have also scaled, we have also scaled uh, IP laws and rules, protocols, like the way we have amendment of Nigeria constitution. They have been amending it and bringing out different protocols, different rules that network should be transfer, network should be moving from one place to the other. You understand me? And that's why we have the version one, version two, version three, version four. I don't know why is my, why is this in closing? Am I closing it? My presentation, why is it closing? Am I closing it by myself or it's just closing by itself? Okay, let me open it again. So they have different version. So we have version one. Version one did not really take, so you can go and do, do research on, on each. Then we have IPv2, but currently we are in version four and version six. Most internet, most, uh, most uh, company uses version four. In fact, our generation uses version four and version six. So when you hear IPv4, you actually mean IP version four. When you hear IPv6, yeah, actually means IP version six. And they have a different way they, 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 they design it. IPv4 is in quadruple, meaning it's in, it's in four, four group. Why IPv6? It's also in quadruple, just that IPv6 it, is not using an octet number. Many of the word octet means when you count one to eight. From one to eight, you will come back again to one to eight. So when you say something is six to power eight, you're talking about octet. Let me not bother you with all those things, but just understand the concept of IT, of IPV. So when they say before, this cider is the way they class, they class IP naming. So in that, that same IP naming, we have four version and version two, version three, version four. We have IP version one. When you see IP version one, as IPv1, we are not using IPv1. We have left all this IP version two, those are people who are doing physical, physical class IT, they will understand it. But currently, we are now using IP version 4 and IP version 6. Um, wait, 5G is going to be resting on IP version 6. But some, some of them are already resting in IP version 4. But more of it is going to be resting in IP version six, where you now see now when you most of us have seen this this cider note. Mind you, I told you that we are we are doing networking. It's not actually we are doing physical networking, but I just want us to have an idea <laughs> because cloud networking is actually designed to look like physical networking. So it's going to have the first quadruple which is going to be zero. The second quadruple, the third quadruple, and the fourth quadruple. Slash the last quadruple, which could be zero. So this kind of naming is actually, when you use alphabet uh, numbers in three numbers, you are actually in, Maybe let's use this, this conventional one that everybody may have known. Maybe 192, 192 dot 168 dot 198 dot 
uh, let's say, a one, two, eight. Yes, that means slash could be zero, or uh, could be in in the rate of either four or slash eight or slash sixteen or slash thirty two or slash sixty four. So normally, you know, anything slash in 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 um in numerics one over two. And one over eight, which one is bigger? One over two. Beautiful. So the more you slide it, the smaller it becomes. But for public cloud, public cloud does not support slash four. Public cloud actually starts from slash eight. I think, no, does it support slash eight? Yes, public cloud starts from slash eight. But mostly, mostly we use slash 16 slash 32 i think there should be slash eight but slash four is so big you understand me so most public cloud does not because it's big but when you say slash zero it means everywhere so well, we're going to be talking about this as we are going forward but when you see a number like this you look at it they are actually in octet eight can divide them you understand me Take note of all this. This is standard networking. But though the public cloud is looking like a physical cloud, but they design it like form of a physical cloud. But for just that, in public clouds, you can decide to have a cider note of 10.0.0.0 slash 0 slash 16 or slash 8. You understand me? Or slash 24 or slash 0. So you can see, despite we are not really, really use, following the standard, you understand me? But you can actually, you can actually still have the same standard because the same rules applies. But just that they just want you to have this feeling of this networking because networking, call it virtual networking or physical networking, is actually the same networking. Now, let me, let me also explain this before we go into our practice because by the time we start practicing, becomes very easy for all of us. But I don't need to be explaining to you what is this, what is this. Now, this is a VPC. Like we, we have explained now, this is a VPC, which covers a region, right? Now, in this VPC, we have a subnet. A subnetwork. Control D, D, D. Let's assume that this VPC has Subnetwork, and we are trying to put this this so subnetwork in different zone. No, mind you, you can one one zone can have five subnetwork. Yes, that mean. So take note of that. Is the one? Is the two? Is the three? Is the four? Meanwhile, we can decide to put all our subnets in one. Is the or it's not the best way to, to work. You understand me? Or it, this AZ can have 20 subnets. So don't think that if you must put subnet, you must share it in the, not the AZ. But you can decide to have it in one AZ. But it's not the best way. The best way is actually to share it across AZ. Now, this, this one explained successfully. Now, this subnet should be able to talk to this subnet should be able to talk to this subnet should be able to talk to this subnet because why they are all the same virtual private network meaning they can securely communicate to themselves but that's why they can communicate to themselves eh? they cannot communicate outside so for them to communicate to outside you must put a gate let me use this thing as a symbol for a gate. Meanwhile, well, there's a standard symbol for it. Let me use this one as a symbol for a gate. For them to communicate outside, you must put a gate here. So this gate that we put here, eh, we, is just to provide this network, this VPC to communicate. So the time, how would they communicate that determines the name of this gate. 
If we say they should communicate to everywhere, we can actually put a gate called IGW, which is known as Internet Gateway, meaning everybody can enter the network. I can also go out of the network. But you can still control how they can have access, just that this network is open to the internet, which basically is, is but despite the network have access to the internet, still does not give this subnet the capacity to use the internet. So it does not also give the internet people to have access to the subnet. So that means for this subnet to have access to this internet, it must be able to route out. So you must create a route. Maybe also know it, know it call it a path. Let's use this one as a symbol for route. To use this gateway. You understand me? You can decide to do it. So when you do this, it means that this subnet now have access to this internet, meaning internet can come in, this subnet can go out. If you make it open, this subnet becomes a public subnet. Why is it called public? Is because it can have access to the internet. Internet can also have access to it. Then, in, many, in this routing that you are going to do, you are going to put internet gateway to this routing. So, despite this subnet has internet, this VPC has internet gateway, it does not mean that all these subnets will have internet gateway. So, for it to have internet gateway, you must create a route table. That routing table, you attach an internet gateway to it. What about if you now create a routing table and you do not put an internet gateway to it. Maybe you create a, a routing table. Let's, let's tie it here. And that routing table, you put another gateway because you can decide to put internet gateway to so have direct access. You can decide to filter the internet that the, 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 the subnet will be able to get to the internet, but internet will not be able to get to it by putting a translator. We call it network translator, NAT, network access translator. Maybe some of you have heard of the word NAT. So it's just to translate the network so that the network, maybe there's a resources inside this, maybe you put server inside this network and you want that server to go to the internet and up, uh, update, maybe patch, you understand me? But you don't want the internet to come into it. So you put a translator here into this routing table. So it's from this routing table that you control how access can come in. Yeah, maybe I just mentioned here when I was talking about here, talking about route, route, right, right here, yeah? routing. So <laughs> is this route table, also known as ROTB, that you control how access to the internet or how the gate is this routing table, this is where you put your gate, this is where you tie your gate to. Then the ACL is the listing the, the is the the way you control how even that gate will be able to connect to outside or go inside. It's called access control list. It's like a firewall. Mind you, all these things are not they are not really like a firewall. They are like a network model. Are you getting me? That have access in and out because they cannot decide to do firewall is mostly tied to application. It's not mostly tied to I say application. Yes, mostly application and virtual machine. So just have an idea that in the VPC, there's a routing, there's a subnet, which, uh, which is tied to a zone. A VPC is tied to the region. A routing table is tied to the zone. Because from the routing table, you can list, you can tell whether the subnet to go into the internet or not. That, from the routing table, you can actually control the access to it. So we are talking about networking here. So a gateway 
is how you want the subnet to be communicating or how you want the network to be communicating. If you want it to be communicated to the internet, we call it internet gateway. You can actually create another gateway called a virtual private gateway, called a VPW. We want to connect your one VPC to another VPC. You understand me? If you want to connect, well, maybe you have one VPC here and you have another VPC in another network. You want the net VPC A to talk to VPC B, you pair them. Most times you use virtual private gateway to pair them. So if you want, what about a physical, some, somebody have a data center or a company have a network already in their physical office and I want to tie that network, that VPC, to public cloud. You can also do it using what we call VPN, private, private, virtual private network. That means you now link the virtual network you have and the physical network you have, you link them together. You understand me? That is also known as intranet. So I'm going to be talking about that. So all these things I just talked about, please try and play this video again. All these terms I'm using, write it down because they form the basics of your work. As a developer engineer, you must use them. You must know them. You must. Because some company we have their physical, they, are, they have server in their office. They want the server in the cloud to be communicating. So you have to know how to set up the network so that both of them can communicate. The reason is because they don't want to pass through the internet. Because when you pass through the internet, there can be a cyber security, it's a cyber, cyber bridge. You understand know I me? Mean? It's going to, and the, the level of transfer. You know, because it's passing through the internet, it's going to be passing through a tunnel and it's going to take time. So when you bind it to your local, for example, if you want to transfer a file from your storage data center to cloud, if you are passing, taking it through the internet, it's going to take a long time. I'm going to take, you're going to follow packages, you know, because you're going to, you're going to transcode, decode, all the stress. So what you just do, just pair your data center to your cloud and just transfer your file. So it's going to be faster. You understand me? Using some AWS have a feature called DMS. You understand me? Database uh, migration services, data migration services. So that is, that is for that. Coach, I will watch the video tomorrow. Please make it available. Yes, you will have it. You have it. Okay, ah, I've spent so much time. Okay, now let's let's just continue. Or, or I think today we can stop here. Tomorrow we we start set up and we we put our server on it, right? Can we do that? Can we stop here today, or should I still continue? Hello. Okay. Let's stop it today. I'm really tired. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Is is it too big? What what I was saying is it too? It's not. It's not out of scope. At least I may have some a little idea about what you have been saying. So at least some points. Okay. Is anybody that's trying to catch something that is looking so hard? <laughs> 